Greetings, Muppet fans. It's Ryan Dozier from the Muppet Mindset, and I am here on Skype slash phone slash whatever this technology is with the star of Disney's The Muppets in theaters now. Go see it. Uh, the man behind and beneath Walter, beneath and behind Tutter from Bear in the Big Blue House. He's been on Sesame Street. He's performed with The Muppets for years. He had a great cameo in Muppets from Space. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Linz. Hi, Peter. Hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome to this interview. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Wow, it seems so big and ostentatious. I love it. <laughs> well, well, we only do big and ostentatious. That's it. I love it. Okay. <laughs> uh, Peter and I have met before. We met in Los Angeles, the city of dreams. <laughs> on the uh, on the. Disney lot, no, no less. Yes, on the lot of the Walt Disney Studios, where I got to see the movie for the first time. Was that your first time seeing you it? Know what? That, was my, that was my first time seeing it completely finished. Uh, they had a, a screening for us before that, but it wasn't, the, the music wasn't final, the, the sound wasn't final, some of the lines had changed. So, But that was definitely my first time seeing it with a big audience. And, uh, and although I've seen it about... I don't know, six or seven times now. That was actually my favorite time seeing it. Oh, me too. Screening. Only, only because that was the one uh, where, when I met you. Right. I mean, obviously. And that's obviously why it was my favorite, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who needs, who needs the movie? We've got each other. We're fine. Uh, <laughs> Ryan, the interview's getting a little bit weird. You're right. You're right. We should move on. We're, going, we're skewing awkward, I think. <laughs> we, we don't want to alienate our audience. No, no. Not again. <laughs> All right, then I'll just ask a real question. Um, Peter, tell us what it was like working on Bear in the Big Blue House, where you got to be Tutter and Pip, one of the otters, and other. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that was that was one of my, one of the, my favorite series that I've ever worked on. It was it was so much fun. It was just a, this very small, very close knit cast, this uh, ensemble, and um, you know, I I think. Uh, Getting to do, especially Tutter, and getting able to being able to develop that character, and um, oh my gosh, it was it was so much fun. I'm going, no, I'm going all over the place here. <laughs> it was it was a great time. It was, it, it is definitely one of my favorite times, or I should say, one of my favorite uh, series that I've worked on. Yeah, it it has a very special place in the hearts of a lot of people, I think. Yeah, you know what? I've I found that to be the case, and I believe that that's true for the cast. I think I can speak for myself and. Tyler and uh, and Vicky and Noel, um, you know, and, and uh, that that little puppet, that little mouse puppet, is just my favorite type of puppet. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's basically a glorified sock puppet. It's it was, true. Like, it was a brilliant, yeah. I mean, it was a brilliant design. There were no mechanisms or anything going on, and um, I just got to be this completely apoplectic mouse. It was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all had fun watching it. But yeah, so we also, you know, the other thing about that show is that the writing was so strong. Oh yes. Um, yes. Yeah, we we had um, you know, Andy Yerkes, uh, Kevin Strader, Mitchell Kriegman, of course, who created the series, and uh, Claudia. Oh, I can't remember. I can't believe I'm forgetting Claudia's last name. Anyway, terrific team of writers, and um, yeah, it was just. Uh, oh, and Noel McNeil, of course, who contributed right. so much. <laughs> Noel is a very nice guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a really good guy. He's bear. <laughs> Yes. In fact, every time he comes over to my house, he's like, what's that smell? It's usually, it's usually my wife's cooking, which is very, very good. Sometimes it's me because I'm a little gassy in the morning. But other than that, <laughs> Well, we won't talk about that. Okay. <laughs> um, and then you were just background performing in Sesame Street and Muppets from Space and lots of stuff. But... Like I mentioned in the intro, your cameo in Muppets from Space. Uh, that, that seems to be the thing that stands out. Um, <laughs> I'm 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 all over that movie. I I, I uh, this is of course before Eric started doing uh, performing Miss Piggy. So yeah. and Frank was still doing Piggy at the time, but he was editing Bowfinger. So for a lot of the movie, um, I was performing Piggy, and then Frank came and, and looped the voice later. But um, I did get to beat up Andy McDowell, and that was very satisfying. Well, I don't think there's anything more satisfying. <laughs> uh, no, that was that was that was a, a lot of fun to work on that film, actually. 
should I should tell you that moment that that cameo moment. Yes. Um, originally, I think uh, uh, they had written that for for Bill Beretta to be one of those cameos, and <laughs> he didn't want to do it. He he kind of tossed it to to me and uh, and Drew and uh, and Ricky and John Kennedy, and um, I was I was so nervous. I, that's the most nervous I think I've ever been <laughs> on on film or TV. Just standing there, that one my one line. Uh-huh. <laughs> One day, wait a minute! I can believe you, man. Um, I was, I was just petrified. I understand. <laughs> so, well, you didn't was, have a puppet to hide behind. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason I'm not on camera. <laughs> um, well, did you get to keep the rubber Gonzo nose? Um, yes, I did. Yes, I did. I still have it. But... And don't tell anybody. But I also have uh, the door in the jar prop. The, the the actual jar that says door in a jar. <laughs> That's awesome. I actually have that prop. They fortunately they, they made a few of them, so um, right. I, you know I may or may not have the one that actually was in the movie, but uh, <laughs> certainly. Well, who cares? It's still cool. <laughs> all the glow, all the glow in the dark liquid that was inside is all dried up and gross looking now, but it, but it's the jar. Yeah, I mean it's a door in a jar. Come on. <laughs> um, all right, now uh, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the Muppets, the new movie. And, um, I mean, there's so much to talk about, but I think something that I think a lot of people are really interested and curious about is, um, how did you get to be Walter and how the audition and casting process go for that? We've heard, I've heard a little bit about it, like you just went in on, in on, and auditioned and then you performed with Jason a little bit, but I want to know if you could talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, um, I can give you all kinds of detail, but uh, <laughs> hopefully it's not boring. Um, I mean, this, the star is really just, my star is just totally aligned for that, that entire thing. Um, uh, you know, it was, uh, my goodness, late spring, early summer of uh, 2010? Is that possible? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Sounds about, about right. Nine. It goes back. It goes, yeah, I guess that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um and I got a phone call uh, to come uh, and audition for this, this new Muppet character. Actually, back it up, before then, there was actually a, um, there was a table read in New York, and uh, it, was, it was for the movie, and um, I had just gotten a phone call about it. They wanted me to come and sit in on a table reading of this new script, and this was the first I'd heard of it, actually. Oh, wow. Um, and they were doing this kind of uh, unprecedented thing where – they were actually having the puppets at the table read, and all the puppeteers, and they had some actors reading the various human parts, mm-hmm. and um, and Jason Siegel was there, and uh, what they wanted to do was they wanted to have a camera pointed at every character um, for a scene, and then they would cut together the table read. That what, what they shot on film is kind of a very rough diagram of the movie. Wow. But with with the Muppets, of course, since you have, you know, one person playing half a dozen different characters, <laughs> and, and oftentimes multiple, you know, some of your same characters are going to be in a scene together, and <laughs> puppeteers only have two arms. Right. You need a couple of extra puppeteers to come in, so they, they hired myself and Tyler Bunch. Tyler uh, helped Steve, and I helped, I helped Eric, so whenever Piggy and Fozzie were in the scene together, Eric would usually perform whoever had the more lines, and then I would hold both up Fozzie and just lip sync uh, to Eric. And, and, it was odd because they weren't really puppeteering. Or we had monitors, and there was like you know 25 cameras in the room for all the different characters. Uh, but the guys were reading the script; they weren't really performing. So it was just just to give whoever a rough idea of what the film would look like. Wow! Um, and so actually, so I heard a very very early version of the script then, and I heard Walter for the first time, and and they just it just fell to Bill to um, to do Walter. And I'm not even sure. I don't even know if there was a Walter puppet at that point. Honestly, I don't remember. Huh. So that was the first I'd heard of the film, and Tyler and I, of course, not having, not you know, really having a character with these classic Muppet characters, we were just campaigning. We were bugging Debbie McClellan <laughs> to to please, can we please come out and just be right hands and background on this film? Yeah. And Debbie's like, well, I don't know. It's a limited budget. You might have to work local, meaning that you get yourself up there, you find a place to stay, stay with friends or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that's where I was at. Well, then. Um, a couple of weeks later, uh, I got a phone call uh, to come and audition for this character of Walter. I was like, "Why? Oh, I thought Bill was doing it. I was like, no, no, they want to have auditions. Um, so 
so I later found out they auditioned a bunch of puppeteers on East Coast and West Coast. And I went in and, um, you know, I, I had heard the script, but, you know, it was a very, very early version. A lot of things changed. And um, they sent me a photograph of the prototype of Walter and then just some basic, you know, character descriptions. That we were told, all the auditionees were told that he was like um, uh, Dustin Hoffman in The Graduate or a more modern uh, example would be Mo uh, Michael Sarah in basically anything. So um, we went in, there was a, a basically a Jason Siegel stand and there was an actor to play against and we did a couple of scenes and then had to lip sync to uh, the Andy Griffith theme song and uh, and that was about it, maybe a little bit of improv. Uh -huh. And I just, I just thought I just totally blew it. I just, I knew I was awful. And I came home and I told my wife, she's like, how'd you do with it? Oh, I was, I was, I stunk. I just <laughs> was awful. And, uh, you know, a week, a whole week went by and I didn't hear anything. And that just confirmed what I knew that basically I was awful. Right. Um, and about 12 days later, I got this uh, message from Debbie McClellan saying, you know, we really liked what you did and we want to, want you to fly you out to Los Angeles next week to, um, to, uh, have a call back for, for Walter. Oh, wow. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she basically said that, there were five of us who came really close to what they wanted, but nobody really gave them exactly what they were looking for. And she said, uh, but what I presume, I presume she told everyone, the biggest hint I could give you is that if this character were going to be cast as a human, that Michael Sarah would already have a job. I was like, okay, boom, that's it. I'm Michael Sarah. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, between um, her phone call and the callback, which was in, uh, in Los Angeles, um, I just I studied every Michael Sarah thing I could get my hand on, you know, um, Juno and Youth and Revolt and Arrested Development. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, what's the other one with um, Jonah Hill? Um, oh, uh, Super Bad. Super Bad, of course. Everything. And as luck would have it, I actually saved a couple of the scenes from the original audition, and so I would I looked at those scenes and imagined how Michael Sarah might envision them or might you know interpret the character and read those scenes. And uh, I've thought a lot about uh, who Walter was, what, what's his reality as a Muppet fan, what would that be like, mm -hmm. which was not much of a stretch for me because I am a huge Muppet fan. Right. I sort of understand that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if you or, or any of your listeners will get that. No, We're probably like, not, but fan. we can it's try. It's a bit of a stretch, but see if you can imagine. No, um, anyway. <laughs> so um, I just, I, I've never studied so hard for anything in my life um, as I did for that role. And then... Uh, I, I arrived at the hotel in L.A. Um, actually, Kevin Clash and I flew out together, and um, I just locked myself in my room, basically, <laughs> and studied Michael Sarah and thought about Walter. And the next morning, uh, actually, it was around 12 noon the next day, um, they had the audition actually in, the, in this hotel in the, one of their little conference rooms. And uh, I went down and uh, got formally introduced to Jason Siegel, and James Bobin was there, who's our director. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was great. You know, Jason and the whole, the whole Judd Apatow group that he's with, they improv is really, really big in their world, which is terrific. And um, I was, of course I was nervous, but uh, not so nervous that I couldn't, you know, do the job. And the first, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, we just improv as Gary and Walter. Oh, wow. And it was great because Jason is such a master at it. And also he's such an incredibly nice guy. I just felt immediate, immediately at ease with him. Um, and, uh, after we just, and, and I, you know, I, I, I thought about the character so much, I kind of knew where he would, hopefully where he would come from, if, if <laughs> any, any direction of the conversation went. I think I, I think I might've even dropped, uh, uh, Muppet, no, actually it was, I'm sorry, it was Tough Pigs I dropped the name of, but, um. <laughs> well, that's okay. We, we but, sort of uh, like them. That's right, my little improv line about Walter writing fan fiction and, and never right. getting anything published because, you know, they are tough pigs right <laughs> Jason, Jason laughed at that but he, he laughed a lot but I, I wasn't sure if that was just his good nature or if I was doing well anyway <laughs> long story even longer um, we, we started reading the scenes and a couple of the scenes we read were two that I had done in the original um, audition and then there were three other scenes that I'd never seen before and um, you know Jason said you know the, 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 the words are there but you know you don't have to stick right to the script, just wherever it takes us is fine. It's like, okay, great. So after about two, of the, two or three of the scenes, James Bobin had been really quiet. He hadn't said a word. And mm -hmm. I said, I put the puppet down. I said, James, you know, I can, 
I, I can do something else. I can change the voice a little bit. We can change, you know, uh, the attitude where this character is coming from. And he's, he's like, oh, no, 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 you, you're doing fine, really. I mean, I, I, if I had something, believe me, I'd tell you. But no, no, just <laughs> doing what you're doing. And I, I took that to mean either um, I stunk so bad he saw that it was hopeless to give me any notes at all or that maybe I was doing okay. Um, <laughs> so I just, we just I was went ahead and went for it. Right. And then uh, we finished the scenes. He's like, okay, let's do a song. And they had a bunch of duets, um, like, like karaoke versions of duets. Uh-huh. Um, they had... Uh, uh, I got you, babe, and um, I think I ended up doing uh, Captain and Neil's "Love Will Keep Us Together." They had the lyrics printed up on a piece of paper, so I was able to tape that to the monitor, and uh, we did that, and it was just so much fun. And uh, we did the first verse, and Jason was like, "That sounds a little low. Let's, let's take it up an octave." I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> we sang the next verse up an octave, and it's like, oh yeah, that's better. And uh, just had so much fun. Just, uh I actually have a DVD of my audition. Oh, wow. That's just great. That's, uh, That's awesome. Yeah, I don't know that it'll ever see the light of day, but it was really... <laughs> right. <laughs> but you have. It was actually helpful when, when it came time, you know, when we actually started actually started uh, filming was, was several months later, and, I, and they, I asked them to send me the DVD so I could remember what the heck I did. Because <laughs> it was really... <laughs> I mean, it just it was so... It was such a blur, and I was, it was such an adrenaline rush that right. it just completely went out of my brain what happened. Um so anyway, I, I felt pretty good about it, uh, but then it w- was another, I guess, week and a half, longest week and a half of my life. I can imagine. So I finally got the phone call uh, asking, telling me that they'd like me to be Walter. Wow, that's just amazing. And now we're out of time because I spent the whole time <laughs> giving you way too much details about my audition. Oh no, that's but great. That, that was the process. Well, that's just that's just awesome. I mean, I really, it, I mean, of course, I didn't meet Jason before that mm-hmm. callback audition, but I, I mean. It felt like it was written for me. I mean, I, it was written for anybody who's a, a huge fan of the Muppets. Right, exactly. Also an actor and a puppeteer. But, yeah. uh, but I digress. <laughs> no, but it was, though. I mean, it was written for anybody who was a fan of the Muppets. I mean, that's, 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 that's a little egotistical of me to say, because I, I, there are so many of my friends and colleagues who um, would also have been perfect for that role. Mm-hmm. So many of us that, of course, were huge, huge fans. Never, never mind that we, you know, that we do this for a living. We're also right. all, all of us are enormous fans, too. Um, but I, I did get very, very lucky. Well, it was well deserved, I think. Oh, thank you. Um, what was it? What was it like? There certainly had to be a, a lot of pressure of bringing a new Muppet character as a lead in in this. Like, you you don't want to overshadow Kermit, you don't want to overshadow Piggy, and it's sort of what Kevin Clash had to deal with with Clifford on Muppets Tonight. Did you ever feel any of that? Um, not from anybody but myself. Right. Um, I put a huge amount of pressure on myself to to get this right, you know, to be to be true to um, to, to Jason and Nick's words, to the script, and to what James wanted, um, you know, but also to be true to the Muppets. And I, I never, while we were filming it and, and the, the the prep and everything, I never really, I never thought of myself as the star of this film. I never mm-hmm. thought of Walter as the lead ever. Um, People would say that, even even like you know, some of the other puppeteers would say that. I'm like, uh, no, not really. This, it's, this is the Muppets. The Muppets is the star of this film, right? You know, and and in, even in interviews with you know, Walt, people say with it, uh, Walter, so what's it feel like to be the star of the film? He's like, oh, no, 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 no I'm, I'm Walter. I, a lot of people <laughs> think I'm Kermit's dog. He's doing. Really, <laughs> um, so I, I didn't I didn't feel that, but I did. Oh my gosh, just just for me myself personally. Um, Having this this major character with the classic Muppets, right. um, I think that's why I, I just I took it incredibly seriously. <laughs> yeah, as far as, as studying and, and preparing for this role, and um, and studying the script, and really, and then also working with such high caliber actors, you know, Jason and Amy, mm-hmm. um, and and Steve Whitmire and Dave Goldson <laughs> and, and, and Matt Vogel and, and David Rudman, <laughs> for that matter. Uh-huh. Uh, as far as you know, wanting to do right with these guys i really uh it was very important to me to, to to get it right yeah um what was your favorite scene in the movie hmm you know it's different watching the movie than working on it um favorite scene gosh it's tough there's a lot of fun scenes oh dog got it 
Ryan, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> you could just say the whole movie and cut that. Yeah, basically the whole movie. <laughs> I, you know, it, there's different scenes, but for different reasons. Like, okay, personally and professionally, my favorite scene to work on was actually one that was cut from the film. Um, it's uh, it was with uh, it was myself, Jason, Amy, and and um, oh, Rob Corddry uh, on Hollywood Boulevard in front of Grauman's Chinese Theater. Um, it was like a three-page scene. It was this very funny bit uh, with Superman, and um, hopefully it'll make it. <laughs> hopefully it'll make it to the DVD, and you'll be able to see it. But for professionally and personally, I was just blown away. That I was like, had to keep like, is this really happening? Right. I'm, I'm in a scene with three major, major <laughs> actors. I'm, there's four of us, and I'm one of the four, and I have a lot of lines. And then, ah, this is great. And <laughs> run Hollywood Boulevard in the middle of the day, and there's all these tourists taking pictures, and oh my gosh. Right. Um, <laughs> that was kind of that was a major pinch me moment, um, you know. And then anything that we did and anything we shot in the in the Muppet Theater and backstage of the Muppet Show. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at the monitor and it's like, okay, this is and actually all around me. This is backstage of the Muppet Show, and here I am. I have a puppet on my arm. I'm looking around me like, look at this Fozzie, this Kermit. I have a scene with Fozzie. I'm talking to Kermit. <laughs> oh, that's just amazing. Also, and oh my gosh, and the songs and and oh, the songs yeah. we just. I mean, everything's great, of course, was shot over a number, uh, uh, I don't know, I remember how many, I think three or four days at least, and and at many locations, mm-hmm. um, and then some, actually, because we also did some uh, blue screen stuff in the studio later on. Um, you know, the music was so great, and the choreography was so much fun, and, uh, and, all, uh, and the, all the dancers we worked with, you know, we actually, actually became friends with quite a few of the dancers. Um, oh, wow. Incredible people, so much talent. Yeah, that, I mean, the that was the other obviously thing. surrounded by constantly surrounded by so much talent. <laughs> Not just the actors and dancers, and, our, and you know, and Michael Rooney, our choreographer and our director, and blah 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 blah, blah go on and on. But um, our DP and our camera guys and the crew. Okay, I'll shut up now. <laughs> no, that's okay. As Kermit told me once, save it for the award, save it for the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll all be looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. As long as they don't play you off. Yeah, right. 